Hi everyone, I'm going to play one of these computer personalities on chess.com. So I've chosen Miguel, who's 1900 and a universal player. So he's pretty good. Uh, last time I tried him, I got a draw. And I'm usually an E4 player my whole life. I've played mostly E4, but I'm trying to learn D4 more. So that's what I'm going to play. Okay, Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit declined, knight c3, standard move. Okay, what do I want to try here? I can try an exchange uh, variation, or I can just play uh, bishop g5 would be my other move. Yeah, I want to try this line. Hmm, that's an unusual move. Yeah, usually you see bishop e7 or knight d7. There's got to be something wrong with that move. Now, if I had played knight to f3 instead of this bishop move, then that would be perfectly normal. That would be called the Tarash defense. So now I wonder why don't people play that against bishop g5? Or maybe they do and I just don't know. So I'm pinning the knight. So I've got pressure here, so if I take I think he has to, well, if I take, he's got two moves, either takes on d4 or takes back on d5. Yeah, if I take on d5 and he takes back with the pawn and I take on c5 and he takes back with the bishop, Am I winning the d5 pawn there? Removing the defender. Okay, let me say this without the arrows. The arrows confuse me. So c takes d5, e takes d5, c, uh, d takes c5, bishop takes c5, bishop takes f6, Queen takes f6, maybe. Queen takes d5. No, I have f2 hanging there. Oh. Let's say that again. c takes d5, e takes d5, d takes c5, bishop takes c5. Bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, and I cannot take on d5. So it doesn't win a pawn. Because his queen would be here and his bishop would be here, both attacking there. Okay, so standard play in the Tarash here would be c takes d5. Um, trying to isolate black with, with or trying to saddle black with an isolated queen spawn. Okay, maybe I just do that here. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, that was his other move. That allows me to play queen takes d4. He doesn't have the, yeah, he does have the tempo, knight c6. I can't take it, my pawn's pinned. Okay, what about a knight sack? What about d takes e6, and then if he takes the knight, then I take on f7 with check, 
And he can't take the pawn with the king because his queen would drop. He'd have to move the king to e7. Okay. So D takes E6, D takes C3, problem is my king side isn't ready to be developed yet and so I don't, I don't think I'm going to have a strong attack. D takes E6, C, D, D takes C3. Take on f7, check, king e7. Queen b3. I don't see anything. Okay, so queen takes d4. Knight to c6. Bishop takes f6. Knight takes d4. Bishop takes d8. Knight to c2 check. Don't like that line. Maybe I do. It takes. Queen takes d4. Knight c6. Bishop takes f6, knight takes d4, bishop takes d8, knight c2 check, king d1, knight takes a1, bishop a5, this knight's trapped, it's temporarily up the exchange but the knight is trapped. But my king side is still completely undeveloped. So queen takes d4, knight to c6, queen a4, and then e takes d5, Maybe I just move knight to b5 here. No, 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 there's bishop to b4 check. And then bishop to d2 to block. I don't like that. I think I have to take the pawn and then decide what to do with the queen. The queen's probably going to a4 or h4 or back to d2. Or I could put it on a strange square like e3. If I put it on e3, I'm pinning this e pawn. And then he can't take my d pawn at all with any piece. Not immediately. It's interesting. Queen to e3. It's an interesting move. Blocking my e pawn. No, he can. If I play queen e3, he can play knight takes d5, attacking my queen. If I take his queen, he takes my queen. So I don't like the line with bishop takes f6 here. I like queen a4, but then bishop d7 is coming eventually. Queen a4, what does he do about the pawn threat on his knight? So queen a4, e takes d5. 
and try something crazy like Long Castle. Not with that open C file though. Play Rook D1. Yeah, if I play queen d2, he always says knight to e4. I have to consider attacking the queen, mutual queen attacks. Well, not in that case, then I can just take knight takes e4. So queen d2 is a possibility. Yeah, queen d2 looks better to me. Some more secure queen, keeping the d file. So queen d2, and then I think he has to play e takes d5 and get that isolated d pawn. Although with the queen on d2, he's got bishop b4 coming. Eh, not really fearing that, I can play a3. Yeah, if I play queen d2, I could be, and he plays e takes d5, I could be winning the d pawn. Okay, let's play that. For, for example, I can remove a defender here and then take the d pawn. I don't really want to be grabbing pawns, though, with this king side undeveloped. And he's got, he's got quick castling here. If I take, and he takes back with the queen, and then I take the pawn with my knight, I gain a tempo on the queen. I'm also threatening that square. Maybe queen back. Can I, can I get away with that and then and then play e4, securing my knight, getting ready to open up my bishop? Can I get away with grabbing that pawn is the question. And if he takes back with the g pawn, I can take it and I'm okay with trading queens, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to go for that pawn. Because I get this tempo on the queen, and I can follow it up with this. And even if his queen takes that pawn, I have that check. And uh, that knight is securing that square from bishop to b4. I have to be really careful here, but I don't want to take too much time either. So I'm going to take that pawn. Okay, so that's stopping me from playing e4 because he takes it with check. It's giving me another tempo, though. Then where's this queen going? He still doesn't have this move. I have to take this tempo and develop. Okay. Now I'm thinking of playing e4. Getting my king side developed here. Securing the knight. Got to do that. Interesting, strange move. 
probably in some lines he's watching out for this fork. So I want to just develop my bishop here. Maybe defensively to e2 to preempt any move bishop to g4. Can move it more aggressively here or here, but the bishop is loose over there. Nothing's defending it. He has to get his bishop developed, and if he puts it here, I can grab the bishop pair. The queen is defended not only by my king, but by my knight. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to be really defensive here with my pawn advantage. Okay. So he develops his light squared bishop, um, threatening to give me an isolated d pawn. If he takes on d5 with the bishop, I take back with the pawn. He moves the knight to b4, puts pressure on the pawn on d5. Not too worried about that, though. A bishop to b5 check. I think I'm a castle here. I could also play rook d1. If I play rook d1, takes, 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 so I can take back with the rook. There is this bishop b4 check, knight d2, bishop takes d2, king takes d2. Maybe rook here. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm gonna get castled. I think my pawn on d5 will be safe. If not, I can give it back and maybe get something for it. Okay, so he tries to undermine the support of my knight. Okay, what do I do here? Now I can put a rook on d1, maybe this rook. Maybe that rook belongs in e1. Put some rook on d1. If he takes knight here, attacking the pawn and the bishop, He's defending the knight again. He can't take, he's just going to take with the bishop. Just make sure if I take on f5, wins the knight, I can play my bishop here. Now his bishop's not even pinned, his queen is defended. So I can't take on f5. I can move the knight away, I can move it here, and defend that. The queen is defended. Maybe that's the safest move. Yeah, that looks safe. Yeah, if I go here and he takes, I take back. I think that's okay. I think I'm going to take that pawn. I don't want to be the one to, to, to trade queens here and help him develop. Then again, I, I'm going to get a quick tempo on his bishop after taking the pawn on e4. That might be the way to go. If I take here, he trades. One of my knights is going back, and his bishop's coming out anyway. Yeah, I like this move. Okay. 
So I'm a clean pawn up. My position is consolidated. I'm in no trouble. My rook is tied down to the defense of, oops, of a2 for the moment. I think I want to develop this rook to e1, putting pressure on his e file. This knight might be coming to b4, put more pressure there. Just move it, kick it away. If he moves there, I move here. Yeah, the knight's not doing anything to me. He's probably going to castle next move and get some pressure down the f file. I'd like to get rid of one of his bishops. His bishop pair looks really good. Let me try this. This bishop here, here, hmm, that might be good. This might force his bishop to an awkward square, like maybe back here, if he wants to keep the bishop pair. If he moves here, I have this move, then he he has to either trade it off or put it way back there. And you can move it here, actually. Hmm. Well, I'm taking too much time. I'm going to put the rook into the game. Okay, he gets his rook into the game. Oops. back. Okay, so do I pose the rook on the d file? I have to watch my a2 pawn. It's a pain. I might have to waste a tempo to protect it. Right now all these intrusion squares are covered. This rook can't get in. I might play this move, keep his knight off that square, move over here next. It's also this move. Threatening to mess up his structure. Get a rook on the C file. Yeah, this, rook, this bishop isn't doing much. I'm not in much danger anymore. No danger of an attack on my king, I don't think. I don't want to give up my only bishop, though. I'm going to move one of these pawns, either b3 or a3. Or if I just give up this pawn. No. Okay, let's play a3. Get control of that square so his bishop, uh, dark square bishop and knight can't utilize it. Now I want to oppose rooks, I think. Okay. How to get rid of one of his bishops. Maybe play this move here, threaten that pawn. And support my bishop coming to c4. 
trading that bishop. Yeah, my rook is defended if he tries to play that. I think I'm going to try that. That looks good. Okay, I didn't consider. I'm moving a little fast. So he gets a tempo on my rook. Maybe here, getting a tempo on his bishop. And if he moves here to attack the rook, he loses the bishop. Oops. If he moves here, then I come back to d2 and get a tempo on the bishop. Yeah, I like that. Here. Okay, so I was able, okay, I got to decide which bishop to take. So I was able to get one of the bishops off. Okay, good. Which bishop do I want to take? Do I want opposite colored bishops or same colored bishops? My bishop is more, I mean, my rook is more active if I take that bishop than it is if I take that bishop. So let's do that. I can trade another pair of minor pieces maybe with knight d4. I can get the rook on the seventh now. Attack that pawn. What's his plan? He doesn't have much of one. I'm going to put the rook on the seventh. Okay. All right, I want to trade rooks and then get my king into the game quickly. I don't want to just retreat my rook. Unfortunately, I'm activating his king. His king is getting to the center quicker than mine. Do I want to just play here? Luckily, I have all these squares covered from his knight. I don't have any weak points he can attack right now. Yeah, my king's got to hurry into the game. That does keep my knight here to protect that. I can push this now, but I think I want to prioritize getting my king up. the king up now. Uh, I should have should have considered that move. He's threatening to double my pawns. No, I, I can just trade. And then put my pawns on dark squares. This king is a lot better than mine, but I do have the extra pawn. Let's trade. Yeah, unfortunately, his king is great. I gotta save this pawn. I really want to cut off his king, but I have to save my pawn. Do I do it this way? No. Okay, I'm gonna have to push g3. Maybe I just start pushing my majority now and keep the opposition here. 
don't see any other plan at the moment. Okay, I don't want his king getting in there. Can't really make any progress though. If I move my king, he comes up here. If I move my bishop, he comes up here. Uh-oh, this almost got me in Zugzwang. Can make a pawn move. If I make a pawn move, then the base of my uh, pawn island is closer to him. <laughs> And I can do this, I guess. Okay. Uh... Oh, maybe I should have put my bishop there while I had the chance. Because now if I do it, he's going to attack it. How do I win this? So bishop here, here, here gets a quick tempo, pushes the pawn. Then maybe I call check and keep him off the square that way. My bishop's more active. Let's go for that. Okay, he pushes that right away. But I can gain a tempo on it and then get the bishop here. Tie his bishop down. Get my king up. Okay, that was a good plan. Okay. Maybe I can... No. I trade off pawns over here. I've got an outside passer to decoy him. I can run and attack that. If he defends, I can attack the back pawn. Can push, give me a passed pawn. Can run right away. He can win that pawn actually, but his king is way off sides. That looks good. Go for that. So he takes with the king. Yeah, he preserves the pawn that way, so I have to I still have to watch the king side. It's gonna get counterplay with that pawn. I can't just drop these pawns. Okay. I have time to run this way. Maybe I keep him out. Maybe I play h3, keep his king out. He has this move. This is difficult, a lot to analyze. Maybe I just play here and keep his king out for now. Yeah, give myself some thinking time. Maybe I drive his king back now.
That looks pretty good. His king would have to go back to one of these squares. Give me a backward pawn, but I'm running this way. Oops, running this way. So here, he, oops. Here, here. I can't draw my arrows. Here, here, here. Yeah, this is looking good. This looks good, just um, keeping an eye on this pawn, and then the king can come up and defend. Well, no, he's going to get this square. Then I can run and get the other pawn, actually, if he does that. He needs to defend this way. It's like he's just in time to keep me out, keep my king off of c5. I see no other moves. So I'll play it and now I'll think. What about this move? So I've got two moves I'm considering here. This one keeps an eye on this pawn. Goes here to defend. I can attack. And then he can't defend both. Let's try that. Okay, he just gives up this pawn. I guess he had to. Yeah, I guess the, the other idea was to defend and then attack, and I'm going to win one anyway. Okay, I'm just going to take the pawn. All my pawns are on dark squares. He can't get, get at them with his bishop. I think again I want to go, I, I want to keep him off of the square, just make this really simple. He can't come up. This should be an easy win now. Do I go for these pawns or do I just bring my king back this way and Start pushing these pawns. Probably both plans win. If I move here now, and he waits, I go over here and win this pawn. Yeah, why don't I go for these pawns where his king is not? So I'm gonna go over here and attack b5. Okay, now I can attack a6. Let's do that. Now I can win both of these pawns. Okay, I think it's a it's a win now. I've got a four pawn advantage. Don't have to think too hard, just start pushing the pawns. cut off his bishop here. And yeah, maybe just eliminate this last piece. Okay. All right, let's just mate with the queen and king here. Or I can get another queen, I suppose. another queen. Okay, so long game. Um, I think I learned a lot. Um, I'm going to analyze it, look at that opening again. Um, interesting end game. The pawn advantage was 
I guess it far outweighed the, the active king he had. All right, thanks for watching.